Hello friends, John Singley here at Plaza de Luna, downtown Pensacola on the shores of beautiful Pensacola Bay where right behind us back here they've just finished pulling uh, one of the American Magic boats out of the water and loading it up. I guess they're all packing up and getting ready to go over to Barcelona where they'll def uh, attempt to win the America's Cup Championship. Big news over the weekend here in Pensacola, speaking of the water, got an announcement from the Pensacola and Perdido Bay Estuary Program that they had gotten some huge news and to tell us all about it is our good friend Matt Posner. Matt, what's exciting? What happened over there over the weekend? Well, good afternoon, John. Yeah, absolutely some fantastic news that's going to benefit the region and our watersheds for generations to come. Uh, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, NOAA, announced this past Friday the award of over $24 million of restoration funding going to three projects in our region. Uh, that's uh, nearly $11 million for the Pensacola Bay Oyster Restoration Initiative, around $12.5 million for the Perdido Bay Restoration Initiative, and then $300,000 for the Escarosa Oyster Shell Recycling Program. So this is a really unprecedented opportunity for our region. Now, you um, in the estuary program announced a couple of months ago uh, a major management plan Tell us about that and how it relates to these grants. Absolutely. So back in October, our board of directors approved the first ever comprehensive conservation and management plan. We refer to it as the CCMP. That CCMP serves as the blueprint uh, for the restoration, preservation, and protection of our resources for the next 10 years. And having the CCMP in place is critical to be able to secure these competitive grant funds for the, the restoration of our estuaries and our watersheds. And so when uh, agencies like NOAA or other local, state, federal, or private foundations are looking to fund projects, they wanna see that there's a science-driven and community-based restoration plan in place. And fortunately, we had that done back in October that made these projects uh, successful moving forward. So you've been doing this a couple of years now on a scale of crawl, walk, run, where is the estuary program? It's a great question. And we're at the jogging phase. So our program has been uh, in the midst of a lot of work over the last couple of years. We've got a great team. We've got great partners and stakeholders that have been engaged, over 250 uh, throughout the year, working not only on our management plan, but the, the oyster restoration projects and other uh, projects that are before us today. You know, that's something that isn't done alone. That's bringing together folks like the Nature Conservancy, uh, Florida Fish and Wildlife, uh, working across uh, the state line with City of Orange Beach and a number of other partners that I don't want to forget. <laughs> but it really does take a village and through that partnership is why we can see more of these efforts coming online in the future. So Matt, uh, tell the audience out here, um, have, have you had real big wins other than this grant announcement? What other wins projects uh, are you particularly proud of at this point? There's so many, John, it's hard to say, but, but if I had to, there, there's two I wanna highlight just quickly. Uh, the, the first is uh, around $2 million coming to the program to implement the design of the Carpenter Creek restoration. And so that will stretch between uh, Interstate 110 down to 12th Avenue. Uh, we're currently working with uh, the Florida Department of Environmental Protection on that grant agreement. And we expect that project to kick off uh, later this fall. And so there'll be uh, a number of opportunities for the community to get engaged. And that comes out of the planning efforts that Escambia County and the city of Pensacola took on through the Restore Act funds over the last couple of years. And so this project will be the continuation of that effort, working in partnership with both the county and city and a number of other programs. So you've got the blueprint for success. You, you've got the grants coming in in large numbers now. Matt, how do you measure success? I mean, how do you know that you're making the kind of results that you're looking for? Yeah, so we are, again, a science-based program, uh, but we're also community-driven. So there's two factors that play into that. The first is looking at the ecosystem improvements. So that's water quality improvement uh, from bacteria reductions, uh, looking at habitat expansion from the amount of oyster habitat and seagrass coverage that we have. These keystone species and habitat types that are critical to having a uh, fishable and swimmable uh, waters for all. 
So we're gonna do that through a State of the Bay report card. And actually our first ever is gonna be released here uh, in May at our management conference on May 4th. And this gives a snapshot in time of the conditions of our watershed. So again, water quality, habitat extent, and, and the like. And we'll be updating that every two years moving forward. So the community can always look back to say, this is where we were in 2023 and measure success moving forward as, as a program. A couple of years ago, I was attending a breakfast uh, down in Perdido Key. Our congressman was down there and the question came up, um, what, what does the congressman consider economic development for this area? And without batting an eye, he looked out the window and said, it's that water out there. The reason we're all here is because of the water for recreation, to fish, to live next to, to swim in. He said, that's what makes a great community. How will the estuary program support specifically water quality in the short term? Absolutely, and, and as you just stated, the, the bay, our natural resources are critical to our quality of place that we have here. American Magic behind us came here for the natural uh, uh, opportunities that Pensacola Bay supports. So through this effort, through this oyster restoration effort, effort that's gonna be funded through NOAA, we have a tremendous opportunity to advance large scale oyster restoration. Again, over 245 football fields worth of oyster restoration. That's a hard point to, to underscore enough. Uh, coupling that with uh, um, work in the upper portions of the water, watershed from sept to sewer conversion, working with our local utility partners, and, uh, and working with our, our local governments on stormwater projects. All those things coming together is what it's going to take to, to improve our resources. Matt Posner has been our guest this afternoon out here at Plaza de Dune. Tell us about the big news for the $24 million worth of grants from the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. Matt, that's testament to the hard work all of you have done. Uh, well done over there. Congratulations and thanks for sharing all that with us. And we look forward to hearing more from the estuary program. Thanks, John.